<laughs> hey there. Working on getting our guest here. There we go. Hey. Ah, we did it. It, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Take yeah, we'll just start with a little, I'll kind of describe. Sarah is a very good friend of mine, for those of you who don't know her already. Um, she is a total badass in the environmental field, has been in working in solar and environmental stuff. I'll let her explain more for like 17 years. And uh, the catalyst for this um, for this interview was a few things. One is that I've heard her talking more and more about the dangers of gas ranges in our home. And as a real estate agent, I have people all the time talking about how they want gas ranges. So it kind of brought it into this a uh, wider discussion about electrifying your homes. And that's what Sarah is an expert in. And in fact, she hosts a really wonderful podcast called Electrify This. And uh, myself and a couple other people were just on her podcast recently. So I'll put a link to that after the show so they can watch that. But in my mind, this was like a, you know, in her podcast, she was very kind to let us speak about the topics that we knew about, but I could tell that she had so much to say also. And so I went, well, Let's give Sarah um, an opportunity to tell us all the things that she knows as well. So Sarah, why don't you do a little intro, professional intro of yourself rather than my just, she's a badass friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks Annie. It's great to be on your show since you were on my show. Um, so I've been doing clean energy, clean energy policy work for 17 years. Uh, so I started when it wasn't even cool um, and it has grown tremendously, the awareness around how our environment affects us and the importance of climate change and air pollution on our public health and our, frankly, our, our future uh, is front and center now. So I am currently the director of electrification policy with an organization called Energy Innovation. They're a think tank based out of San Francisco, but I'm based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, our work is really focused on giving policymakers and decision makers sound information and facts to help inform their decision making on a range of issues, um, including what's happening and what's playing out right now in the federal policy arena. But I love Utah and I'm keenly devoted to uh, making this place a great place to live for many years to come. Yay, well, we appreciate you. <laughs> um, so why don't you just explain a little bit about what is electrification um, and why does it matter? Yeah, so um, we're in a climate crisis and we have a major air pollution problem, not only here in Utah, but across the country. And on the former, we've, we really have like a decade to turn the barge around before we get so far past the point of no return that life on this planet becomes relatively uh, uninhabitable, uncomfortable, and quite um, unpleasant. I'm not saying that those changes are going to happen in a decade. I'm saying we have a decade to act and really make a lot of substantial changes to how we do things today so that by 2050, 2060, we're in a, a better place. Uh, on, the, on the issue of air quality, of course, we all know that Utah has a really uh, horrible air pollution problem, and it's only getting worse year after year. We're seeing more and more yellow and air, uh, yellow and red air days and it's impacting our public health. It's impacting our quality of life. And so electrification at the end of the day is about switching the vast majority of our economy still runs on fossil fuels, particularly transportation and buildings, but also industry and agriculture. Our electricity grid is getting cleaner and cleaner by the air. We're making great progress. Lots of renewables are coming online. Lots of storage is coming online. You know, we've got a lot of uh, carbon-free resources that we're calling on, but we haven't really cracked the nut on how do we shift our transportation and buildings to run on clean electricity. So that's what electrification is about. Let's, let's move off of oil and gas and on to clean electricity. And uh, one of the key thing to keep in mind is that our buildings are responsible for about 13% of our greenhouse gas emissions nationally. And transportation is a little over, or close to a third of our emissions. So if we tackle those two sectors effectively, we're chipping away at a huge chunk, nearly half of our overall emissions. So, and is that just out of curiosity? Is that uh, residential or residential and commercial? All of the above. Yeah, Everything. every building, every structure, 
absent, you know, the, the random barn that you see on the side of the road. <laughs> Anything that's powered with gas and or propane or has uh, fossil fuel connected to it is uh, part of the problem. I've always blamed the barns myself. <laughs> the they're, um, they're a silent, a silent, a silent suspect. The silent killers, for sure. Yeah. Um, so in regards to electrification and uh, us taking charge of our own homes, uh, what are some steps that homeowners can take to make their homes cleaner and more efficient? Um, yeah, so many care? things. Uh, and, and that's what I think is really cool about this uh, both this conversation as well as the overall opportunity that we're talking about. Uh, you know, we often feel really disempowered when we especially read the news and we just think about like the, the tremendous challenge that, that we're facing. Um, it's really easy to just be like, I can't do anything. I'm an individual. This is somebody else's problem. And it's going to be solved by people with more resources and more power than I have. I think that's a huge fallacy we need to correct. And particularly as people who either own homes or properties or live in them, um, there are tremendous opportunities, especially through, you know, relatively low cost measures, as well as more substantial measures that we can take to improve our homes and our buildings. Um, you know, I saw a study today that actually 27% of our current air pollution comes from our buildings. So I was referring earlier to greenhouse gas emissions. Now I'm talking about our actual, you know, air pollution, um, homes and buildings, 27% and 55% from vehicles. Wow. The trajectory we're on right now with our population growth, with the tremendous development we're seeing, that's actually going to flip if we do nothing to change what's happening today, where in the year 2050, we'll see 55% of our emissions coming from homes and buildings and around 25% coming from vehicles. So if we really take into account the power we have today to shift this dynamic, not only on climate as well as air pollution, we have a lot that we can actually do and happy to dive more into those details, which I know we want to talk about. <laughs> For sure. Um, so yeah, what advice would you offer homeowners? I mean, you, I mean, you understand I'm a realtor. And so a lot of the people that either are currently watching this or will be watching it are people that have bought homes. And my thought is like, you know, I, I started with solar. I bought solar last year. Um, on my home and I think about uh, my, my sweet father when I told him that I bought an electric car and had solar, his response was, do you really think that's gonna make a difference? And I went, yeah, I think so. Like if we all do that thing, that it will. And so, yeah, maybe some ideas on how people can get started electrifying their homes based on, you know, a variety of budgets and things like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, to that point, Annie, really quickly, uh, that's kind of speaking to what I was just saying. It's super easy to think that individual choices don't matter. And that's a nihilistic perspective. Sorry, Frank. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank. <laughs> you know, we don't think that way. And we know where we'll end up. Uh, I prefer to, you know, feel more empowered in my choices. And we know that they do matter, especially when they add up and they become a collective action. And especially at the local level. Um, we know that there are a lot of things that we can do. So making the switch, um, I think it's important to think about the following. There are different categories of actions. So it, it's easy to become overwhelmed by like, ah, there's so many different, you know, appliances or solar or EVs or whatever. Okay, so first and foremost, energy efficiency and weatherization. This is what I call the low hanging fruit, the relatively straightforward, simple, uh, you know, peanut butter and jelly of energy uh, that we can all pursue in our homes. The second is electrification. And I'll talk more about that. But that has to do with our systems, our heating systems, our water heating systems, our appliances, our cooking systems. Um, from there, we also have distributed generation or on site energy and storage. And then the fourth category is transportation or electric vehicles. The first three are really kind of the, um, the crux of what we want to talk about today. The second thing to keep in mind is before you get started, before you like go into the rabbit hole of research on the internet, kind of sit down and do a little assessment. What are your goals? What are you most concerned with? What are you personally trying to achieve? Can you look at your bill history? Can you look at what you're paying right now for your energy bills? And by the way, both Dominion and Rockman Power will give you these uh, kind of annual energy uh, synopses of your energy bills for the last year. So you don't have to go back and like 
download every PDF. <laughs> They'll actually give you your, the snapshot of your home. Um, what's your budget today? What are you willing to save for? What are you willing to like have as a stretch goal for in the, for, in the future years? What incentives are applicable to you where you live? Um, and all of this upfront research is going to be super helpful to kind of clarify things before you dive in. Um, the second thing is to like start scoping out good contractors. And in this day and age, sadly, they're hard to come by, but they are out there. And, you know, actually I was looking on the Rocky Mountain Power website today. They have a list of contractors that they have pre-approved to help homeowners with improvements and installations of equipment and going through them is going to make your life a lot easier because they're going to be already familiar with the incentive programs that are out there. So once you prioritize your goals and really clarify, you know, what you're trying to achieve, then you can start to better understand what you're capable of doing today, a year from now, five years from now. Also taking a step back and realizing like, if you add all the things up that you want to do in one sitting, it will be overwhelming and very expensive. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, like, I can't go out and buy a new furnace, a new induction cooktop, a new refrigerator, a new EV, and a solar system tomorrow, uh, and I'm in this business. So that's okay. You don't have to. I think the thing is to, like, figure out what, again, like, based on the goals and the priorities, what you want to be doing. The really good news is that the efficiency measures and the weatherization measures that I talked about are not only low-hanging fruit, but they're usually really low-cost and or provide relatively quick savings in the near term. So my the third I just piece. To, oh, oh, go sorry. ahead. Let me no, just go ahead. jump in there. Um, so actually, my favorite contractor just joined uh, our group here, and we're going to be having him talk. Um, I think he's in two sessions. I can't remember which date, but we'll put it out there, um, about weatherizing your house. And he's been really, um, really invested in learning about how to properly um, – insulate your house and making sure you're not losing any, um, you know, any energy in your home. And I think about my place, which has solar, but I think it's wildly inefficient in terms of how well it's actually insulated and sealed up from the outside. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's such a great point to bring up because like you said, people get so caught up in like, oh, I can't afford solar. I can't afford an induction range, but you can definitely afford just like little weather barrier seals to put around your doors and, uh, maybe some film to put over the single pane glass, things like that. So for anybody's out there, we're going to be talking about that too coming up. So anyway, absolutely. And I had a personal experience with that. Um, after doing a big retrofit, I had effectively two homes. They were connected, but one was 1903 <laughs> and the other was 2021. <laughs> okay. So I knew Perfect from care. the very, yeah. <laughs> I knew from the very beginning, uh, once, you know, once we were able to move into the, the newer part of the home, how inefficient the old part of the home was. And I was able to like target, um, namely the attic was a huge, I was just, I was, I was heating the neighborhood as I like to say. I was like, who wants gas? I got gas. Here, you have some heat. Gas for so, you know, I sealed up the, the attic hole and man, what a difference. Now both sides of the house actually like feel around the same. The, the thermostat isn't, you know, sending mixed messages. So that's a huge one. Um, some other low hanging fruit, and I'll just touch on this because I think it's really important. Smart thermostats are super cheap for the most part. And there are also incentives from both utilities, Dominion and Rock Map Power to install them, which basically offsets the cost and they're basically free. I have one. They're great. Um, you can program them so that they uh, save energy. But also if you're, if you like forget to turn off your heat and you're like, oh, I just left for five days, you can from your phone just go boop and then done. Um, if you have one of those manual ones, please get rid of it. Like please <laughs> move into the 21st century <laughs> and update your thermostat. Um, checking your air filters. Okay. This is a simple thing. Your furnace is definitely a, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, not only will it uh, make you so disgusted, I saw your video on that, by the way, um, as to what you're breathing in your home, but it will also uh, make you feel so much better after you do it, and they cost, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 50 bucks, depending on what you have. Check your duct work for leaks and tears, you know, if your duct work's old, especially like 
you can seal that up and close it up and all of that ductwork that runs through your basement or your attic, it's leaking air if it's not sealed. Um, have your HVAC system uh, commissioned and or like maintained annually. You know, have somebody come out and there are a lot of people out there who do do that with coupons. They come in the mail, very cheap. Um, like you said, caulking and sealing and weather stripping, setting your water heater to a certain degree. Um, lighting is huge. You know, LEDs these days are uh, relatively cheap. You can get them anywhere in all the big box stores and, and small hardware stores. Um, the lighting quality is so much better than the fluorescent lights that we were pushing for many years. So, you know, make that switch. In fact, Rocky Mountain Power has, through their website, you can order a free uh, kind of starter kit with LEDs, and they come with four bulbs. So you can get That's that cool. today. Yeah, I like that. Um, so these are all the uh, low-hanging fruit steps that will get you kind of familiar with your home. The second part is evaluating your systems as they exist today. So you have the big equipment, like your furnace, your AC, or your evaporative cooler, um, your water heater. You also have what I call smaller equipment or appliances, your um, induction, or your, excuse me, your, your cook stove and oven, your refrigerator, um, and any other appliance, your, I said so, any other appliance that you have in your house that you could go down tomorrow and you know pick up a new one at Home Depot. The first category, you're gonna to wanna to work with a contractor to get an upgrade. Uh, I don't know very many people out there who know how to install HVAC systems, so <laughs> unless they're certified and professional. Yeah. Um, so doing that, uh, evaluating the opportunity, if you know your uh, HVAC system or your water heater is running towards the end of its life, it is a great time to plan the replacement. The last thing people want is a super cold day and their furnace goes out, or yeah. a super hot day and their AC goes out, or a super uh, normal day and you wanna take a hot shower and your water heat is out. These are, you know, opportunely, great opportunities to switch from gas to electric. So Rocky Mountain Power offers a number of incentives for heat pumps. I know the name is a little deceiving, uh, but basically <laughs> heat pumps refer to uh, a new technology that's all electric, very efficient, four times more efficient than your old electric uh, equipment that you're, you know, may have run into like electric resistance, heating or electric water heaters that you talked about on the podcast. And heat pumps are really, um, they're great. They, they interact with either the air or the ground and exchange temperatures to optimize your indoor air temperature and or heat your water. So highly recommend looking into these for your big systems. For your appliances, uh, the big one, which you mentioned at the start of the show, are what we cook with. <laughs> we don't know how damaging it is to our health to cook with gas in our homes. And the reason we don't know is because we've been given a, a, a good number of years of lies from the gas industry saying, this is safe, this is healthy, this is fine. It's super not. If you are burning gas in your home, especially if it's not vented, you have a 42% chance greater increase of getting asthma, especially if you have children, and you're burning noxious fumes that are actually uh, effectively unregulated because it's indoor air that are, you know, on the, if you were outdoors, they would be regulated by the EPA. So. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that we see those little warning labels on like portable gas stoves. Don't burn this in a small space because it's bad for you. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> That's a really good point. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. So, so the solution. Okay. People love cooking with gas. I get that. Uh, the podcast we just recorded on Electrify This, which you can get for free anywhere you get podcasts, talks about the opportunity to switch to induction cooking. And also, if you have electric stoves, maybe just upgrade it to one of the newer versions. They're pretty snazzy and they're not that expensive. So you don't have to spend $8,000. You could spend, you know, uh, in the $1,000 range to get like a nice electric stove. Um, but I highly encourage folks to look into induction stoves or electric stoves as an alternative to burning gas in your home. It's super unhealthy. 
Well, and that's, I loved, I love that we had the podcast. And like I said, we'll link to it later in this conversation too, because I have been so sort of blindsided. Like you said, it's such sort of an emerging um, study. And I was just as unaware as many of my clients who have been, who have gone in and said, oh, we have to have a gas range. And then just thinking about all of these people that I've helped buy houses with gas ranges and or help them convert to gas ranges from electric and now all of this emerging information on the health effects. I feel guilty. Um, so, uh, you know, getting folks to um, just educating people on, you know, and then people can make their own choices from there. I mean, I have a gas range in here too. So, And I do too. But I did find an interim solution uh, between taking out the gas stove and buying a more expensive <laughs> induction cooking range i bought a two burner induction cooktop that sits on my counter yeah we cook with it uh every day and it covers 90 percent of the meals we want to cook you know i'm not cooking f you know five plate meals like or you know five burner meals i'm right you no know, fancy chef so <laughs> two burners is just fine you can find them on amazon or anywhere else you like to buy things um for in the one to two hundred dollar range so yeah very accessible it gives you experience with it. And it also just sort of reminds you that when you're cooking, you can like do this in a simple way, a cheap way. It doesn't have to harm your health. You won't get headaches. You won't feel like you have, you know, respiratory illnesses afterwards. It's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. I love that as an intermediate option. Um, read my contractor just said combustion free is the way to be. So we can make that our, um, our rally cry. Um, I want to I want to keep it short today. So let's just talk about you talked a little bit about um, incentives through Rocky Mountain. Um, and Qu it's not Quest Star anymore, is it? It's a uh, Dominion. Dominion. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe just talk a little bit more about resources there are to help um, to help people do those conversions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so definitely Rocky Mountain Power and their WattSmart program. Dominion actually does have uh, incentives as well. Uh, if you're doing, say, windows or insulation or air, air sealing uh, they, and you have an existing uh, gas furnace, you can definitely take advantage of their resources um, and incentives. And I encourage you to do so, you know, because if, you, if you're still going to wait five years to switch out your gas furnace, fine, insulate your home. You know, like you don't have to wait for all of it to happen at once. Um, I highly recommend you go to Utah Clean Energy. Um, granted, they are my former employer. But they are also the best resource in Utah for all things clean energy, all things energy efficiency. And they also have a great uh, additional website if you are looking at solar or you want to know more about um, what the kind of processes are for putting rooftop solar on your home, solarsimplified.org. Um, it's a great resource. It helps walk you through the process. It has got a list of good contractors and walks you through the incentives and so on and so forth available through that. I will say that I'm proud to say that uh, net metering, which is the arrangement with um, Rockman Power, if you do go solar and get a bill benefit from providing energy back on the grid, it's actually been preserved at a relatively decent rate for a while. Um, subject to change because it's always shenanigans, but I'm hoping that that will stay at least relatively constant. Um, and yeah, it's a good, it's a good resource for you. Uh, other great resources, you know, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and Department of Energy also have a ton of information for folks who want to know more about building efficiency or electrification. Um, and also Electrify This, the podcast is quite handy and you can listen to it <laughs> while you go running or do your dishes. Um, let me put one more plug in for windows and doors. Okay. They are more expensive, but Holy moly, comfort wise, such a game changer. It's quieter. You like actually understand what it means to have an insulated barrier between you and the outside world. And relative to the summer we just had with that horrible, horrible wildfire smoke day after day after day, I can't speak enough about how important it is to actually have yeah. an indoor airspace that's relatively insulated from the outdoor airspace. So sure. good priority to put on the list. I love it. Yeah. I had uh, years ago, I lived in a house that had single pane windows and in the winter it was always so cold in there. And I got some of the, you can buy just sort of 
plastic sheeting and you use a hair dryer to kind of seal it there. And when the wind would blow, that plastic would like, like suck in and out um, just from the wind. And that really showed me like how much, you know, airflow was going through. And though I have <laughs> two uh, or uh, double pane windows in my home, I'm suspicious of them. And so I've actually thought about getting some of that someday so that I can see the airflow that goes through them. So it's a good way to test your system, uh, test your windows out. Even if you yeah. have more modern windows, they might not be great. Like these ones, I think. Are well, and um, thermal, thermal imaging is a game changer too. I mean, if you, have, if you do have a contractor come out to your house uh, and they have the thermal in imaging camera, they can show you just how much... Yeah. Uh, how much loss we get through our windows and doors. So don't take yeah. that uh, for granted. And, <laughs> and HEPA filters, yeah. I mean, air, indoor air filters are another really great tool in our toolbox if we're, if we're really concerned about our own uh, health and air quality. Um, you know, invest in a, a good indoor air filter and, and help filter your space. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate yeah. all the info and um, I will link and make notes of all the things that you mentioned uh, so that people can look those things up and then we'll obviously be linking to the podcast. So if you guys want to hear uh, Sarah and I talk again, along with two other incredibly smart, articulate ladies, um, we can do that. But um, for now, we'll sign off and thank you so much. Thanks, Annie. Bye. Bye.